my policy from the beginning has been that uh, President Assad uh, had lost credibility, that he uh, attacked his own people, has killed his own people, uh, unleashed a military against innocent civilians, uh, and that the only way to bring stability and peace to Syria is going to be for Assad to step down and, and to move forward on a political transition. Intelligence officials in Pakistan say a local commander from the terrorist network Islamic State has admitted receiving funds transferred via the U.S. He made the confession while being interrogated. RT's Ganesh Chichikan has the story. The Pakistani police arrested an ISIS commander, Yusuf al-Salafi, and sources told Pakistan's Express Tribune that the commander confessed to receiving funds routed through the United States to recruit young people to fight in Syria. Al-Salafi reportedly said he received around $600 for every recruit he sent to Syria and that he was working with the support of an imam. The paper quotes one source saying, the U.S. has been condemning the Islamic State activities, but unfortunately has not been able to stop the funding of these organizations, which is being routed through the U.S. This report raises so many questions. First of all, is al-Salafi telling the truth? If he is, does this make U.S. banks complicit in funding terrorists? And another one, were U.S. authorities aware of this? It's no secret that he just... A little over a year ago, fighting ISIS was not a priority for the U.S. Washington was focused on trying to remove Bashar Assad from power. We now hear that President Obama will ask Congress for $5.3 billion to equip and train Iraqi soldiers and, quote-unquote, moderate Syrian rebels to fight the Islamic State militants. Over the past few years, Washington has been much criticized for not having a good idea about who exactly is doing the fighting on the side of the opposition in Syria. And many are now concerned that some part of this new package of funding and weapons could end up in the hands of ISIS. Now, U.S. military aircraft have dropped ammunition in areas held by ISIL terror group in Iraq. According to volunteer forces who are fighting the terrorists, American helicopters dropped boxes of weapons in Yathrib and Balad districts in the Salahuddin province. Now, the airdrop comes as the Iraqi army and volunteers are making significant gains against the terrorist group there. Now, back in October, the U.S. military admitted that a bundle of ammunition and weapons it had dropped over the Syrian border town of Kobani had ended up in the hands of ISIL members. Reports say the U.S. military has airdropped weapons for, for the ISIL on several occasions. By the way, I'm trying to find my article. Where did it go? It's a top story today. It's already scrolled off the main page. It's so important. No, uh, there's my other article about the imploding economy. Where's my article about the... Um, where's my article about the... Uh, no, that's the 18-month-old baby flags the terrorist can't fly. Guys, pull up Paul Watson's article, please. Um, with the photo... 
from French news agency where they admit, where they admit on record that there's Al Qaeda guys in black uniforms with the Al Qaeda flag with the UN observers. And the secretary, the UN envoy to the UN under Secretary Clinton, Rice, comes out Friday and says there'll be more bombings, Assad, inside Damascus of government buildings if you don't do what we say. There it is. Al-Qaeda rebel pictured with UN observer in Syria. Video also shows rebels transported in UN vehicles chanting Allah Akbar. And scroll down. And there's more. There's other photos, videos. Look at that. Black Al-Qaeda uniform with a black Al-Qaeda patch. You blow that up, the French news agency confirmed, that is a Al-Qaeda hoax. Guys, pull this up. Al-Qaeda flag flying over Tripoli. All over Libya, Al-Qaeda is the main force, given weapons by our criminal Federal Reserve, occupational New World Order government, along with the collaborators with the New World Order. They're giving them, who do you think the globalists are allied with? Saudi Arabia, that's Al-Qaeda central. Who do you think they used to attack Iran? Al-Qaeda. The State Department admitted six years ago they fund five different terrorist groups to attack Iran, four of them Al-Qaeda. There it is, Daily Mail, flying proudly over the birthplace of Libya's revolution, the flag of Al-Qaeda. There it is. That's the patch on the guy's arm. That's who they landed by the thousands in those boats the U.S. and NATO navies brought in. And then I've got to, when I fly, they'll say, oh, Alex Jones, he's a troublemaker. Where are you going? They now do the behavior thing. And I go, dude, you want me to play patty cake with you? You work for a criminal government that has you seizing control of transportation. You work for the people that run Al-Qaeda. Just shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up, shut up traitor. Shut up, scum. Get out of my face. I'm not an unconscious jellyfish yuppie that doesn't know what country this is, that doesn't know the New World Order. It runs Al-Qaeda. There's more photos of it, the Al-Qaeda flags. And that's who they're using. They admitted. They even said, oh, my gosh, Al-Qaeda's bombing Syria a month ago. We better give our rights up. They may attack us. Look, I actually saw in the news. I was flipping through channels here at the office like a month ago. I mean, there's articles. You can pull them up. They're like, well, it just shows Al-Qaeda is still alive. Uh, they're attacking Syria and blew up the police stations. And then it was Fox News. I remember it. Or was it CNN? And they just move right along. So they use Al-Qaeda to attack Syria and Libya and then even use that to say, look, Al-Qaeda is alive and well. We need to take all your money and take all your freedom. That is propaganda designed for people that are completely asleep. It's like when Bush gets up and says, um, well, Iran is running Al-Qaeda, the Shiite Al-Qaeda. And the State Department official gets up and says, uh, the president, uh, Mr. President, respectfully, uh, the Shiites and the Sunnis are two different groups, sir. And Bush goes back to the podium and goes, no, they're not. Al-Qaeda rebel pictured with UN observers in Syria and the West and the U.S. ambassador of the U.N. says, step down Assad or Al-Qaeda will continue to blow up your police stations. They are Al-Qaeda publicly is a creation of the globalists, the CIA, and is used to menace the West and take our liberties. And they use Al-Qaeda to take over Libya, now Syria, and it's on the news. And the U.S. ambassador of the U.N., Rice, said last Friday, step down Assad or there'll be more bombings. And I listened to NPR and it's like, the freedom fighters bomb some more police stations. And the freedom fighters wear Al-Qaeda uniforms with the Al-Qaeda patch. All right, I'm already digressing. That's in the stack, Infowars.com. Al-Qaeda rebel pictured with UN observers in Syria. This is even in French news agency AFP. That's where the photo comes from. But again, I'm, I've got to, as I guess I drive on the highway now, because they're trained the police to do this, have them grope my wife and children. Again, getting in our space, prisoner training, that's all this is. 
where I'm a terrorist because of Al-Qaeda, while they work for the West. And then the biggest show in the UK, 8 out of 10 cats, makes a joke out of it. And I'm told some of the people inside the, the, the thing are fans. In fact, somebody I even know, I guess, works there. And so this is their way of at least getting the point out. And Hasselhoff and the others get a big laugh out of it. But it's not funny. It's not funny. Right now, the world is watching what's happening with ISIS in Syria. And so people are starting to wonder just how ISIS came to be. And a lot of people are uncovering evidence that it was actually the U.S. government who created ISIS. But our media just keeps shoving all that evidence aside, trying to ridicule it even, in order to brainwash us. Like they did with this piece of evidence. Through a FOIA request, a 2012 Defense Intelligence Agency memo came to light that actually predicted the creation of ISIS through our American foreign policy. The memo actually says, quote, there is the possibility of establishing a declared or undeclared Salafist principality in eastern Syria. And this is exactly what the supporting powers to the opposition want in order to isolate the Syrian regime. That's what the memo says. So in other words, it says, it looks like we could create an extremist group and that could totally screw up Syria. This is in this document from the DIA, our defense intelligence agency, remember. So when the memo came out, our lackey media immediately downplayed it. They criticized it. The Daily Beast even mocked it, basically trying to brainwash Americans into believing that the memo was nonsense. But you know who didn't mock it? Michael Flynn, the director of the DIA, at the time the memo was written. And the only news outlet that actually told his story was Al Jazeera. Recently, he went on their show Head to Head, and he said that he remembers when that memo went across his desk very well, and that it is not only nothing to mock, but it is clear proof of the American government's intention to create ISIS. Flynn says that when he took the memo to the White House administration to warn them, they not only ignored him, but that they willfully turned a blind eye to the potential creation of ISIS. Flynn says that willfulness was clear-cut evidence to him that the administration was deciding to let the creation of ISIS happen, that they knew it was going to happen, and that they intentionally let it. This is the former head of the DIA, not some conspiracy theorist. He was an insider with important information about the birth of ISIS. The whole world should know this as it's sitting there pretending to care about what's going on in Syria, right? But do you think we'll hear that story on any American mainstream media outlet? Nope. They'll just go right on trying to brainwash us into thinking we're actually against ISIS. The worst part of the whole story is just how much that brainwashing actually works. Tonight, let's talk about that. being with the responsibility of right. certain Islamic scholars or Islamic groups. Uh, you hear lots of people say it's the responsibility of the Shia-led government in Baghdad, the mistakes that they've made in the recent years. Uh, you hear people say it's the fault of Assad and obviously the repression in Syria. You hear people blame the Gulf countries for allegedly funding some of these groups. Um, very conveniently, I often find, we hear very little about America's own responsibility in this conflict, in this mm -hmm. problem. Isn't it the case, General, that there would be no ISIL today in Iraq if the U.S. hadn't invaded and occupied Iraq in 2003? Yeah, I think that looking back, uh, there were a number of strategic errors that were made. You have to look back over, you know, 50, 60, 70 years, and you can even look back longer, but we definitely put fuel on a fire that was... Were, that by had, uh, by had invading some, and the behavior that had happened. some embers there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. I mean, when we, you know, history will not be kind to the decisions that were made, uh, certainly in 2003. 
And here's the thing, I don't really Go, don't. Going into Iraq, yeah. de definitely not. And, and not just with Iraq, obviously there's Syria. You're yeah. on record as saying the handling of Syria by this administration has been a mistake. Many people would argue that the US actually saw the rise of ISIL coming and turned a blind eye, or even encouraged it as a counterpoint to Assad and a secret analysis by the agency you ran, the Defense Intelligence Agency, in August 2012 said, and I quote, there is the possibility of establishing a not declared so or undeclared <laughs> Salafist, it's not secret anymore, it was released under FOI. The quote is, there is the possibility of establishing a declared or undeclared Salafist principality in eastern Syria, and this is exactly what the supporting powers to the opposition want in order to isolate the Syrian regime. The U.S. saw the ISIL caliphate coming and did nothing. Yeah, I think that what we, where we missed the point, I mean, where we totally blew it, I think, was in the very beginning. I mean, we're talking four years now into this effort in Syria. Most people won't even remember, it's only been a couple of years, the Free Syrian Army, that, that movement. I mean, where are they today? Al-Nusra, where are they today? And what have, how much have they changed? When you don't get in and help somebody, they're going to find other means to achieve their goals. And I think right now what we have allowed is... The whole new world helping them yeah, in 2012. Yeah, we've allowed this, we've allowed this extremist... Were you know, these extremist militants to come in. But why did you and allow them to do that, General? Well, you were in post. Are, you were the head are, of the yeah, Defense right, Intelligence right. Agency. Well, those I, are, I, those I, are I policy I took the liberty, took those the liberty of printing issues. out that document. Yeah. This is yeah. the memo I quoted from. Did you see this document in 2012? Was this come across your table? One oh, of your yeah, yeah, yeah. I paid very close attention okay. to all this. So when you sure saw did. this, did you not pick up a phone and saying, what on earth are sure. we doing supporting I mean, that, these Syrian that, rebels? That kind of information is presented, and those become, those become, I argued about it. Did you say we shouldn't be supporting these groups? I did. I mean, we argued about these, the different groups that were there, and we said, you know, who is it that is involved here? And I will tell you that uh, I, I do believe uh, that the, the intelligence was very clear. And now it's a, it's a matter of whether or not policy is going to be as clear and as defining and as precise as it needs to be, and I don't believe it was. Just on, just on what you're saying, just to clarify here, you're saying today, today my understanding is you're saying we should have backed the rebels. You're saying in government, you agreed with this We analyst. should have done more earlier on in this effort, uh, you know, than, than we did. We, but we in really, 2012, we, but in we 2012, which was can. We three, that can, not, three years ago, let's just be clear, just right. for the sake of our viewers. In 2012, your agency was saying, quote, the Salafists, the Muslim Brotherhood, and Al-Qaeda in Iraq are the major forces driving the insurgency in Syria. Mm -hmm. In 2012, the yeah. US was helping coordinate arms transfers to those same groups. Why did you not stop that if you're worried about the rise of quote unquote yeah, Islamic I, I, I mean, I hate to say it's not my job, but that my job was to was to ensure that the that the accuracy of our intelligence that was being presented was was as good as it could be. And I will tell you, it, it goes before 2012. I mean, when we were when we were in Iraq and we still had decisions to be made before there was a decision to pull out of Iraq in 2011. I mean, it was very clear what we, we, what we were going to face. Well, I admire your frankness very on this subject. Very clear what we were going to let face. Me, let me just, to one, before we move on, just to clarify once more, you are basically saying that even in government at the time, you knew those groups were around, you saw this analysis, sure. and you were arguing against it, but who wasn't listening? I think, uh, I think the administration. So the administration turned a blind eye to your analysis? I don't that know the if they turned a blind eye. I think it was a decision. I think it was a willful decision. A willful decision to go support an insurgency that had Salafists, Al-Qaeda, well, and Muslim Brotherhood. a willful Brotherhood. decision to do what they're doing, which, which you have to, really, you'd have to really ask the president, what is it that he actually is doing with the, with the uh, policy that is in place? Because it is very, very confusing. I'm sitting here today, Matty, and I, don't, I can't tell you exactly what that is. And I've been at this for a long time. Okay, well, let's go back to Iraq. I just want to ask you one right. last question about Iraq. Many would argue that the Iraq invasion was a recruiting sergeant for extremists and terrorists. You seem to have conceded partly that earlier on in this interview. You said that I think it we was added a, I think it was a fire, strategic I think it was mistake. I think history will not be kind. It but let me just get very mistake. specific on Iraq. U.S. prisons in Iraq are believed to have helped radicalize thousands of young Absolutely. Iraqis yeah. who passed through them. Absolutely. Uh, not just through torture, but through providing a recruiting ground, a meeting yeah. place, a training facility for the very same militants yeah. that the U.S. is now bombing. I think 17 of the top 25 yeah, I, I, there's no, there's ISIL no commanders. Doubt, there's no doubt that the prison system that was, that was the Iraqi prison system became, uh, you know, places, training ground, the, the, the training ground for what we're facing So it today. wasn't just 2003 that U.S. poured fuel on the fire. It was much later on as well. Well, I, US I don't think it was so much. It's not the U.S. so much. I, well, let, I, me, let me quote you, your former colleague, Major yeah. General Douglas Stone, who ran the U.S. Right, detention Stone, system right. in Iraq. He yeah. said he called the U.S. prison system a jihadi university that was breeding more terrorists. Yeah, I, I believe that. And he ran them. 
I believe that. I it's went, not I, just the Iraqis, as you just down, said. It's I, the Americans. I went down there. Well, I mean, what we did was we allowed, we allowed things to happen in those prisons, in those detention facilities, in, in Camp Cropper and Camp Buka, to where guys like al-Baghdadi spawned, and others as well. And then when we turned those detention facilities over to Iraq, that became far worse because there was no standards in those prisons at all. You at least were, we had well, let's standards. Talk about, let's talk about standards. You were a senior official in the Joint Special Operations Command right. at that time, JSOC, right. which is the kind of elite, top secret unit uh, responsible for the killing of Osama bin Laden, among other things. Uh, you've been described as the father of the modern JSOC. Uh, and you mentioned Camp Bucker and Camp Cropper, and you mentioned standards. You didn't mention Camp Nama in Iraq, yeah. uh, which was nicknamed Nasty Ass Military Area and where, according to a New York Times investigation, U.S. interrogators beat prisoners with rifle butts, spat in their faces, and used them for target practice in a game of paintball, where the motto was no blood, no foul, meaning interrogators couldn't be prosecuted if they visibly, if a detainee didn't visibly bleed. Are you telling me, A, those are standards you're proud of, and B, that didn't help in no. the rise of ISIL? No, I mean, obviously, no. I mean, those are not standards. They're not standards that I will ever be proud of. So there's a new article out of Infowars.com by Mikhail Thalen. Obama gave over 1,500 terrorists asylum in U.S. documents reveal. Now, documents obtained by Judicial Watch reveal that the Obama administration gave as many as 1,519 terrorists asylum in the U.S. in 2014. Now, according to the government watchdog, the administration let that many people in. Uh, before the Obama administration tweaked a federal law last year, these four nationals would have been banned from the country for supporting terrorist causes, Judicial Watch writes. But under the changes, the Security of Homeland Security has discretionary authority to waive certain grounds of that and to let people come in and stay and have asylum. So this fits in right with what we're talking about. The borders are open. And not only are the borders open, now we have the government allowing these terrorists to come in and gain asylum. And one of the things inside this uh, book I'm reading by Jurgen Toddenhofer, where he's talking about inside the uh, IS, he says he thinks the greatest threat would be people who are already in the other countries, not the ones mainly in Syria and Iraq, but the ones who've already dispersed and are already in the U.S., in the EU, somewhere over that way, waiting like a sleeper cell just to wait no attack. <laughs> <laughs>